If there's one game I've played more with my daughter, with my nieces, with my friends, it's probably Hide and Go Seek. Whether you're stuck inside because it's raining, or stuck inside because of a global pandemic, what could be better than a game of Hide and Go Seek? I played this game with my daughter too many times to count. Sometimes, I confess, I played it a little too well. I remember one time we had a house that had a spare bedroom turned into kind of a junk room. Whenever my sister-in-law would come and stay with us, we would have to empty the room out so she could get access to the bed. We kept a whole pile of pillows in that room. One time in a game, I hid myself under all those pillows and I turned the lights out. And I was so quiet that even when my wife came into the room trying to help my daughter find me, even she didn't see me. When I was younger, I would have felt victorious for that. I won the game. Nobody found me. I hid so well. As an adult, I think the reason I play the game is because I want to be found. I love to see that burst of excitement when my daughter finally finds me, even though I've hidden well. I think a lot of people are wondering if God is hiding from us. You know, we believe in a hidden God to begin with. In the ancient world, the gods were made of stone, or wood, or metal, and they could be held and manipulated. The God of Israel made it clear that he would not be made of wood, or stone, or metal. He was not to be held. He was not to be manipulated. He was hidden in glory. Though our God is hidden, I think our God still loves to be found. I think we have to be honest. This whole pandemic, it's not the worst thing that has ever happened to the world. There was a time when the Jews lost their homeland, were carried off to Babylon in exile, and they were wondering if God had hidden himself from them. The prophet Jeremiah says, no, I'm going to make a new covenant with you. And in that new covenant, I'll have plans for you, plans for the good, not plans for evil. And when you pray, I will listen, and when you seek me, you will find me. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus tells us, if you just ask, It'll be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock, the door will be open to you. I think our God loves that childlike thrill when we find him. I think he enjoys when we discover how God has been hidden in the everyday circumstances of our life. But I don't think that's the end of the story either. In the Gospel of John, Jesus has these friends, Lazarus, Mary, and Martha, two sisters and a brother. Lazarus becomes ill. Maybe it was a virus. We're not sure. Martha and Mary start sending people to Jesus, trying to find him so that he would come and help Lazarus out. They knew the miracles that Jesus had done. But Jesus stays hidden. Finally, when news reaches Jesus that Lazarus is dead, only then does Jesus go to Bethany to visit Mary and Martha. The end of the story is that Jesus is going to raise Lazarus from the dead. 
But before we get to that, there's a couple of interesting exchanges that Jesus has with Martha and Mary. With Mary, he has deep compassion. That's where we read that Jesus wept when he saw everybody else mourning the loss of Lazarus. But Martha, Martha runs out and meets Jesus before he even steps foot in the village. I think she wants to give Jesus a piece of her mind for taking his time, letting Lazarus pass away. On seeing Martha, Jesus tries to comfort her. He says, your brother will rise again. Martha seems a little consoled by this. Of course, we all know there's the day of the resurrection out there. God will raise us all. But that day's a long ways off. It doesn't offer me much consolation right now. It's then that Jesus says something truly remarkable. He says, Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. That far off day that you're waiting for, it's here standing in front of you. Do you believe that? We can almost hear that childlike thrill when Martha says, Yes, Lord, I believe. I believe that you are the Messiah. I believe that you are the Son of God. You are the one. I've found you. And then she adds, You are the one coming into the world. It's an important phrase in the Gospel of John. Remember John 3.16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. God sent his Son into the world to save the world, not to condemn it. Here's the thing, God's, God's not hiding under a big stack of pillows anymore. And it's not simply that God is finding pleasure when we happen upon Him. God has come into the world. God has come looking for us. God wants to find where we have hidden. Right now, even as we're wondering where God is in this whole global pandemic mess. We know difficult days are still to come. This is going to stretch out in one way or another. God wants to be found. If you will only seek Him, if you will pray, if you will ask, You'll knock on the door. It'll be open. God wants to be found. But remember this. God is also seeking you. Don't hide away from Him. May you know the joy of finding God hidden in your life. May you know the joy of being found by God when He finds you.